A shepherd leader. Fully let all mortal flesh. and to stand for the call to worship. This morning's call to worship comes from Psalm 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord.
for your children who have gathered here. We ask that you will send your Holy Spirit in our midst. Take control of the service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us remain standing for the affirmation of faith, which comes from Revelation chapter 14. And we'll go from verse 6 to verse 12. Revelation 14, 6 to 12. We begin together. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, say with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying, with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. We've come to a very important phase in our worship service today. And we're going to be inviting all our visiting friends to stand. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord or God made them all. We have on the record just about six persons, but we see standing just about four. <laughs> and I'm going to be calling the names of those that I have recorded here, after which I'm going to ask, oh, we see them popping up. Isn't that wonderful? Really? Thank you so much and remain standing. Now we will let the church hear the names of these persons. The first that we have, we have the Fender family. Can you raise your hand? Amen. Praise the Lord. Remain standing. And they are from St. Andrew. We have Brother Murray, and he is from Manchineel. Amen. Amen. We have Dean from Portland. Who is Dean? Praise the Lord. Amen. He's standing. Good. We have Pat, and she's from Somerstone Road. Where is Pat? Pat, just raise your hand. Okay, yes, we have Jillian Wilson, and she is from Sherwood Forest. Amen. Jillian, praise the Lord. And I have Sonata Thompson from New York. Where Amen. is she? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, there are other visitors that are present here. Can you join? Standing, are there any on the upstairs? Please join. We want to welcome you. Welcome, welcome, visitors, friends. We call you also our guests. And we treasure your presence here with us today. Embrace this holy Sabbath day of rest. Accept the gift 
and the special blessing that it brings as you worship and fellowship with the children of God as we will together, if we remain faithful, await the soon coming of our King. You may be seated, visitors, and now for our members, to our regular members, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and only nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Do continue to be what God expects you to be. And in continuation of our service, I now invite you to turn in your hymnals to Hymn number 506, a mighty fortress is our God. We will stand at the sound of the organ.
at this time in our worship, each person will have a chance to partake by giving a tithe and offering. Will the deacons please come forward? Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power, and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor comes from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you again for this privilege to be here. As we are about to give back a portion of what you have provided for us, pray, mighty God, that it may be a blessing for the furtherance of your cause. Pray you may bless those who have to give. Pray you may bless those also who don't have to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The words of scriptures from the ages past. Bring ye all the tides into the storehouse. Make a consecration that will ever last. From you all the promise blessing. Bring ye all the tides into the storehouse. And prove me now, say the Lord. Each month, persons celebrate their anniversary. So at this time, I invite the person in charge to come at this time, followed by the children feature by Sister Davia.
Happy Sabbath, church family. We have come to another month end where we always take time out to recognize our members who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries and to give God thanks for his blessings on them. Weddings and marriages are God's idea. Weddings are beautiful, delightful, and blissful occasions. When a couple stands at the altar holding hands, gazing into each other's eyes, reciting their vows, they are filled with joy and hope. Every couple believes that their love is so special and their bonds so strong that they will remain together in sickness and in health for better or for worse. The reality is that take any dozen wedded couples and four will jump overboard. Six will stay on deck without joy or love because of children, career, family, and church. And only two will enjoy a happy marriage. But there is hope. There is hope in King Jesus. There is hope in the Lord. As we call the names of the individuals, we're going to ask you kindly to just come to the front so we can recognize you. First on the list, we have Brother Duane and Sister Shanika Lowe, and they are celebrating nine years together. Amen. Next on our list, we have Brother Cecil and Sister Patricia Lindsay, very young in this business, just two years. Kindly come Amen. to the front. They are coming. Next on the list, for celebrants for the month of March, we have brother Kevin and sister Alicia Brown. And brother and sister Brown are celebrating five years. Yes, and they are coming with their blessing, you notice? Yes, they are coming with their blessing. Then we have brother Harold and sister Joan Spaulding. They are celebrating all of 39 years together. Amen. And they want us to know that brother and sister Joan Spaulding, yes, they got married on the 6th of March, 39 years ago, and that was Elder Howell Spaulding's birthday. So sister Spaulding was his birthday gift. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah, our treasurer and his beautiful wife. Amen. Amen. And um, the last list name we have here, we have brother Keith and sister Joan Edwards. They are celebrating 50 years. Golden together. years. Golden years. They are unable to be here this morning. They would like to be here, but they cannot be here this morning, so we pray for them. God will still continue to bless and keep them. So, happy couples have double vision. Double vision. Would you like to have double vision? They store up their past and they have hope for the future. They never lose sight of their love story. They never lose sight of their love story. Remember when, excuse, excuse me? Yeah. Okay, just just stand up there for me. Stand up. It's a 44 years. Carl, Carl is up. 
Okay, we have an oversight here. We have um, Sister Authors, and she's celebrating 44 years. 44. Okay. Sorry about that, Sister Authors. Okay, so they often speak of a future in which they see themselves together. They want to get old side by side. Happy married couples are special. They always repeat the story of how they met, how they courted, and they make their anniversaries special. And from the book, The Adventist Home, which we always like to quote from, from page 106, I'm going to read for you a short quotation, which is to inspire us and even the others who are celebrating other months. This is to inspire all of us to continue on this marital journey. It says, though difficulties, perplexities, and discouragements may arise, let neither husband nor wife harbor the thought that their union is a mistake or a disappointment. Determined to be all that it is possible to be to each other. Continue the early attentions. In every way, encourage each other in fighting the battles of life. Study to advance the happiness of each other. Let there be mutual love, mutual forbearance. Then marriage, instead of becoming the end of love, will be, as it were, the very beginning of love. And finally, or finally, we are going to say that the marital commitment is one that we propose to keep whatever happens for better or for worse a way of thinking that motivates us to perceive in our spouse only his or her positive characteristics and to express appreciation for those characteristics. We keep the marriage vows when the ecstasy and the feelings no longer exist. And it's finally, a covenant similar to what God has made with his people. We are called to imitate in our sphere what the heavenly bridegroom, that is Christ, does for his bride, the church. He says that you will love one another as I have loved you. And that comes from the book of St. John, chapter 15 and verse 12. Okay, let us now bow our heads as we pray. Kind, loving, and compassionate Father, you have said in your words that it is not good for the man to be alone. We thank you, Lord, that you have called these couples together and for the way you have been blessing and keeping them over the many years that today they can come and celebrate. As we celebrate with them, Lord, we give you the thanks, we give you the praise, and we give you the glory for keeping them over these years. We pray today that they'll continue to be dedicated to you. We ask that you'll continue to bless them. We ask that you'll provide for them, protect them, we pray. Bless their homes, and Lord, we pray that you'll give them resources that they will have enough to spare. We pray that you'll bless all the other couples also, and help us all to remain faithful to the end, so that when you shall come, we all will be ready to meet you in peace. What we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we... Don't leave us yet. Go ahead.
children feature. Let the little children come. Let the little children come. Let the little children come to me. Let the little children come. Let the little children come. Let the little children come to me. And do not forbid them. Do not forbid them. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, bigger boys and girls. The topic of our story today is... Daniel and the lion's den. Who can tell me about Daniel? He was a nice man. Anybody else? He killed the lion. Daniel was the favorite servant of King Darius. This made the other servants jealous. Can anybody tell... Tell me what they did because they were jealous? Because he killed him. Um, them make him write one fake something that he worship one nether god or something like that. They told the king to make a law that no one could pray to God. Daniel prayed to God anyway. So King Darius shot him in a cave filled with lions. The king did not want Daniel to die, so he asked God to protect him. When the king returned in the morning, Daniel was safe. God closed the mouths of the lions so that they could not hurt him. King, king Darius made a new law so every person in his kingdom would worship Daniel's God. This morning, let us pray to be brave like Daniel and thank God for listening to our prayers. Who would like to pray for us? Dear Jesus, help us all to follow you. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for all the things you have done for us. Help us that we might always remember to pray and ask you to grant us what we wish. Pray in times of troubles and in times of good. Amen. Let the little children come to me. Let the little children come. Let the little children come, let the little children come to me. And do not forbid them, do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Please stand with your Bibles in hand. Our scripture reading comes to us this morning from Psalm 95, 1 through to 7. And we'll read alternately. That's Psalm 95, 1 to 7. Right. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with sound. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of his hills is his own. The sea 
is his, and he made it, and he made his hands form the dry land. O come, let us reach and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Seven and last together. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pastors, and the sheep of his hand, the day if he will hear his voice. Here ended a portion of God's words. down before the Lord our maker. O God, our heavenly Father, he who sits in heaven yet controls the earth, we're grateful to thee for the gift of life. We're thankful to thee for this Seventh-day Adventist movement. We're grateful to thee, Lord, for the Bible, the written word. It has been used to shape and reshape the destiny of men and women in these closing days of earth's history we pray that uh, as thy word is proclaimed many men and women will come to know Jesus Christ who to know is life everlasting we're thankful to thee for the children of the Port Antonio Seventh-day Adventist Church we pray that thou will bless them immensely. Beat back from around them the forces of evil. May they become shining stars for this movement and light bearers in this dark world of sin. Lord, we pray in a special way that thou will anoint those who have thou has chosen to proclaim the message of hope to us today. We pray that the hands will be heavy on them so that as they prophesy, we will see ourselves and be closer drawn to Jesus Christ. In a special way, Lord, we pray that thou will send thy holy angels to encamp round about this place, in Jesus' name we pray.
you know, this church is a very unique church. There are many things that have been done in this church that we are the first to do it. I can remember in the past we had one choir over there, we had one choir up there, and we have one choir on the choir loft being conducted by one man in the name of Joseph A. Newman. Never seen that before. This church is the only church that at one time we were having four evangelistic campaign being run by this church simultaneously. A lot of first timer. I can also remember that this church had a wedding, or should I say two weddings, two persons being married, or two couples being married at the same time in this church. And I could go on and on. Number of first timers. Today, we are going to be witnessing another first timer. One of the speakers today is marrying to Elder Edmund Brown. I thought you would say amen. And she has three children. The next speaker is married to Sister Evelyn Brown. And he has three children. I did not say they have six children, you know. So don't add it up and say six. I say three children. This morning, brothers and sisters, we are going to again be witnessing a first timer. The messages that we will be receiving today will be coming from the couple, the couple, Sister Brown and Brother Edmund Brown. I sincerely hope that you will listen attentively as they bring us God's word of hope. However, before they speak to us, we will have the meditation song being done by Sister Toxter. Yeah. 
Let me say a pleasant good day to everyone. It's about midday, and so I must say good day to you. Let me say thanks for that wonderful song. And thank you, Brother Panton, for the introduction. And I will introduce the other person <laughs> a little from now. On Sabbaths, we gather here at 10 Summerstone Road. What is at 10 Summerstone Road? It is a Seventh day Adventist sanctuary. What is a sanctuary? Is it a place where people who believed in God, believed in his words, come and fellowship and learn and share of God's goodness, his blessing, and rejoice with each other? God has been good to us through the week. His mighty act of kindness and generosity we come to share with each other. The difficult moments that we have during the week, he brought us through. And so today we have come to give thanks, to praise him and to adore him. For he is worthy of our praise. It is with these vehicles in our minds that we celebrate. And our thoughts and actions come forth in thanksgiving, praise and adoration. The one who has given us life and so we have come to worship. We have come to worship. Many weeks, many years, we come to the sanctuary for worship. But many times we have come and worship has not taken place. For we enter and just as how we enter, we left the sanctuary. Because that which we should have taken, we did not. And many individuals will ask themselves, why did I come to church? Why am I here? We are here 
for a purpose. We are here for a purpose. Through the week, there have been toil and labor, difficult moments. And many of us come on Sabbaths to share God's goodness for us. But the occasions have not present itself for us to give thanks. Instead, we come and we listen to different individuals giving negative or positive informations. We have no contribution. We did not make any contribution to worship. And so today, Some of us will understand why we come. Individuals will walk off the street and come because they come be for prayer. They want to come to receive the blessings of God. And so they have come in to the sanctuary where they can share. But at times there is no here for them. And instead, they go home the, just the same that they have come. Psalm 95, let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are wonderful, you are good. You are our Savior, you are Lord, we are our King. And we come today to share to share in the gospel. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. You preach that gospel over 6,000 years ago in Eden. Thank you, Lord, for what you did. Today, the world says, that you are still in the grave. And in the morning, you're going to come out and they're going to sing, he is risen, he is risen. But you are not in any grave. You're alive and you're well. And you still control the universe. For you are God. There is none like you. Thank you for the messages that will come. Guide us through, we pray, in Jesus' name. I know that many of us have gone through the passage, the passage that was read. The passage that was read in Psalm 95. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. What is thanksgiving? Every member, everyone who come to the sanctuary each Sabbath should come with thanksgiving. Everyone should come with thanksgiving on their lips. For God has been good to you. He has brought you through an untried week. You didn't know anything about it. But he supply your needs. He bring you out. And so we come to give thanks. And sometimes our thanksgiving need to be heard. Hear what I said, because this is what strengthens others. Verse 3 says, For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth and the strength of the hill is his also. Thanksgiving and praise and adoration. What is praise? Praise is a vehicle 
Just as how your blood is a vehicle that transports nutrients from one section of your body to the other. That is what praise does. It transports. It takes it to. And which praises on our lips. We are giving our body the nutrients that it needs. Have you ever seen happy people? They always look young. They always have a smile. They are always giving. Mean people are crude. Very crude. They age very fast. But when we give and can give thanks to God and to man, he takes care of us. First today, um, you might wonder how this sermon will go. My wife has been through quite a storm lately. And today she will bring her thanksgiving and her praises to God for what he has done for her. He has wrought miracles in her life. And so I'm going to allow her today to bring her message to you, after which we will have the conclusion. Thank you. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endures forever. We worship God by giving thanks. Let's just think for a moment. God wake us up this morning. We are in our right mind. Our senses are intact. We can communicate with each other. The Lord provides, and the Lord protects us moment by moment. And so, for so many other blessings, isn't he worthy of our praise? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endureth forever. King David gave thanks unto God for fighting his battle for him. Queen Esther gave thanks unto God for saving her people. Anna gave thanks unto God for waiting so long for a son. Abraham gave thanks unto God after waiting for that promised son. Moses gave thanks unto God after crossing the Red Sea. The first thing he did was to build an altar. Miriam, Moses' sister, she too knocked timbrel, danced, and gave thanks after that mighty deliverance from the Pharaoh's army. When Jesus healed the lame man that could not walk because of his infirmity, he gave thanks and he leaped for joy, singing and praising God. I too want to acknowledge God's mercy and goodness towards me. For some reason, I cannot explain, but everything that I had planned to present to you now it was just deleted from the, the tablet. I cannot accept, ac accept it just about 10 minutes ago. But I will try to see how much I can remember. In 2019, I, I, I was diagnosed of cancer. On that very day when I got the results, Brother Brown was on his way to Florida at a party. I did not open the results until he reached. I did not tell him the results until the party was over. I was alone at home. 
So it was just God and me. I think for a moment, and then I come to my senses. I said, Lord, you said you will not give me, it's become personal now, more than I can bear. Then I said, Lord, you really believe I can bear this? That is why you allow it? I then said, I took the papers in my hand. I sat on a chair and I said, well, Lord, I want you to sit in this chair beside me. I took the paper and I said, Lord, you said that I am to cause all my cares, all my burdens upon you. Here are the papers, Lord, they are yours. Take control now. I knelt on my knee, I acknowledged who God is, and then I present myself as just a humble clay. I said, Lord, you are my maker, and everything is in your hand. Now take over. I prayed, I tell God everything. I ask for forgiveness of every sin first. And then I started to talk to God. I felt his presence there. When I'm finished, the answer was, your diet needs to change. That was the first thing. I changed my diet. I went on I go on mostly fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grains. Most of the things I was eating was very expensive. But thank God I have a supportive husband and children as well. They always ensure that I get the food that I wanted. It continued. I did not rush into it. Doctor is not here today, but every day doctor would encourage me. You need to go and do this or do that. I smiled. I said, yes, doc. It continued. I decided to go to Kingston to do an historic tummy. When I went to the doctor, the doctor said, it's quite a while now. And... I would love to do the surgery for you, but it must have been all over your body. My daughter was there, she said. After that test, I started on the herb, and then I went and did an um, MRI. And the MRI came back negative. The doctor said, um, I cannot do the surgery on you. I'm going to send you to UA by an um, gyno-oncology, and they will start the chemotherapy on you. My daughter said, but the results say that there is nothing there. Sorry. All right, so he continued. He said, okay. He called up by you with two doctors up there, and he asked for guidance from the doctor. Now, this doctor is a elderly person, very mature, and versed on these things. I was recommended to go to him. Sorry. So when I went there, he said... I cannot do the surgery because this must have been all over your body. So I'm going to send you to do a PEP. Now the PEP exam, ex, this PEP test, examine from your brain right down to your toe. When the result came back, it was negative. Um, I must confess that a lot of prayer is in this thing. All right, at one point I was in one of these um, MRI machines and I was in there for 45 minutes. And for that entire time before I go in, I was praying. I pray and I pray. I pray for everybody that I know. 
sorry, in the family circle. All right, so after that test, the doctor said, okay, I'll do the surgery now. But for some reason, I delay. I did not go ahead and I did not do the surgery then. For about a year or more, I was still there, still depending on the Lord. Then one day, I have an ingrown nail. So I went to two private doctors. They decided not to do a surgery on my toe. But then I was referred to the hospital, Port Antonio. When I went up there, the doctor started to look through my file. He said, but um, you were sent to do these tests. I said, yes, doc. Where are the results? I said, um, they are by the private doctor office. And apparently this doctor, he was working up the hospital. And I have copy at home. He said, okay, you're going to take those copies to me and let me have a look on them. So I said, yes, doc, but it's my toe. Doctor said, yes, your toe, but this is far more serious than your toe. So I said, okay. Um, so anyway, he sent, take me to the theater and he take care of my toe. And my toe is all right now. But then he said, um, go to the gynecologist of Port Antonio Hospital. So I went there. When I went there and the doctor talked to me, he said that um, I cannot do the surgery. You have to go to a gyno-oncologist. All right, now this gyno-oncologist, when they do their thing, they refer you to chemotherapy. So I said, okay. And they gave me a letter and I went to UA. When I went there, I was at the clinic, all right? When I went in, I was examined. They sent me to do tests. I did the tests, all right? Nothing came back. They said, all right, they are going to check the breast. All right, they sent me to do a mammogram. When I did a mammogram, it came back. The doctor said, we want to see it a little clearer. So they sent me to do an ultrasound. Now, when I was doing the ultrasound, the doctor was there for quite a bit of time. Then he said, I'm going to get my supervisor. When the supervisor came, she was there, and she searched, and she searched, and she searched. And then she looked at me and said, what you did? All right, that result came back. It was negative. But still, in a week time, they called me and asked me to do another test. This one is where they had inserted the contrast in my body to pick up any cancer cell that is there. So I went and I did the test. The result came back negative. All right. I was encouraged to do the historic tummy, so I said, all right, I'll work along with that. I'll do the historic tummy. So I went in in December of 2022, and I did the surgery. I did not get the result until early this month. That is over here. So when I went into the doctor, um, some intern doctor train trainers, they came and they were giving me instructions, said, you are to go and do, chem they were giving me form to do chemotherapy and they were giving me form to do more tests. I said, um, why chemotherapy? And I started to question them. Of some of the questions, they could not answer. So my son was there with me, he said, You'd like to talk to the doctor, because from the surgery, I did not talk to any doctor. So the doctor came. The doctor that came, he was the one that did the surgery. So I said, Doc, how was the surgery? He said it was successful. I said, did you find anything outside? 
those lymph nodes that you took out, did you find any cancer in there? He said, no. I said, doctor, did you find any cancer at all? He did not respond to that question. He said, it can come back. And then he said, praise the Lord. The doctor said, praise the Lord. He said, what did you do? I want to know what you did because I don't want to die from cancer. It continued, and we were in there for a while, and we talked. And then he said, go and tell your family and friends what you did. And today, I am thanking the Lord for what he has done for me. So people, when you pray and you talk to God, claim your promises. Claim your blessing. It is there. Wait on the Lord for your blessing and he will direct your part. Never fail to claim your promises. So I thank the Lord for whatever reason my life is extended, maybe it's like Ezekiel. But I promise the Lord that I will do whatever within, that is within my power to give him the praise and the thanks and to tell others about him. I thank all those persons in the church here who know about my situation and who had prayed. So many prayers went up and I know that the Lord intervened. So I thank you all and I pray that we'll continue to pray for each other because the Lord is real and we are his children and he will not forsake us. Thank you. garment so wondrous fine and myrrh their texture fill its fragrance reach to the heart of mine with joy and being thrill out of the ivory palaces into a world of woe. Only his great eternal love made my Savior go. In garments glorious he will come To open wide the door And I shall enter my heavenly home To dwell forevermore Out of the high for he palaces into a world of woe. Only his great eternal love made my Savior go. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the harm of the Lord revealed? Jesus is the one who has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. 
Individuals are at this time waiting for tomorrow morning to sing he is risen. But Jesus has already borne our grief and carried our sorrows. He died upon the cross of Calvary so that you and I could have eternal life. What more could he have done? How many times have you come with your burdens and you took them home back? Why not leave them at the altar? Why not give God your heart? So many times we have come and we are just listening for others to say the wrong word instead of traveling with our praise and our thanksgiving we come to listen for criticism i thank god for the wife that he has given me she is a praying person and many of you might not even know that she does not cover for anybody if you are wrong, you are wrong. There is no shelter. So just as cheap, you just own up. Just go and tell God what's on your mind. Tell God what's on your mind when you come to church. Your praise, your thanksgiving must be with you. Don't bottle them up and wait and listen for people to say hallelujah and praise God. Because hallelujah and praise God and amen are voluntary. I will not come here and tell anybody to say amen or to say hallelujah. It must come through the aid of the Holy Spirit. He brings you to this place and he conditions every one of us. And when you need to say it. He will pull it from you. He will take it from you. You don't know what that person is going through when they shout. But so many a times turn their eyes and look. I remember one morning going into Kingston with my wife. And I tell you how God is good. I sat in that clinic and when they finished I got up and we exit I drove all the way back to Port Antonio and when I reached Pasley Garden just to go up to the house I said wait where is my where's my wallet and I searched through the van I didn't find it and the Lord just bring a peace over me because inside there was bank cards. I have some U.S. dollars and quite a number of things and some extra money that if the doctors were to ask for whatever, I would have the funds. And we prayed about it. And the next morning, the next morning I said, to my son that um, go by the hospital and find out if they find it there. And so I left the house and I come down here. And when I reach the church gate, most of you know Linval over by DIB. Linval came across and said, Mr. Brown, a policeman in Kingston called me and said, have your wallet and your IDs and everything. Yes. And so, when I receive it, because I asked my son, who is working in Kingston, to go and collect it for me. And when he collect it, it seems as if they, not, they never even move it. They just look and see the ID and my address. And because he knows somebody there, 
You just call the person, and I receive it. I have to give God thanks and praise because you have hundreds or thousands of people every day in that hospital. I don't know how many of you have gone there. It's a continuous flow because every ailment that you have in Jamaica, they have clinic and everybody congregate in one section and they shift to their different areas at times. And I was in the common area. And God hide that wallet so that an honest nurse could see it and pick it up. So there are so many things we can give God thanks for each day. It's not by chance. Let us, by God's grace, half of my sermon is still here. But the time is not with us. So I'm going to say to us all, remember, when we come to worship, it's worship we come for. Once you enter the precincts, it's for worship. It's not time to idle on the outside and talk. The hour is late. I don't know how many of you have witnessed to someone and see them baptized. You know the joy that fills your heart? Jesus is coming soon. He is waiting on us to make everything right. Open the doors of your heart so that he can come and dwell with you. May God continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we serve an awesome God. And we have to keep praising him and thanking him continually. We also need to be faithful. So let us keep pushing. As we say, pray until something happens. At this time, we are going to turn our hymnals to number 184. Jesus paid it all. Let us stand together as we turn to number 184. and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to be my home. Sin had left the crimson stain, he washed it white as I was 
garments white in the blood of Calvary's Lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Before the throne, I stand in him complete. I lay my trophies down, all down at Jesus' feet. Jesus paid it all, all to him I hold. God and our Father what's in heaven. As we come to the end of another segment of today's worship, we want to thank you, Father, that for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us so far. We want to thank you for your grace and for your mercy and for your promise, Father, that when we pass through the fire, it will not burn us, and when we go through the water, it will not overflow us. We have your precious promises to claim, Father. Help us to claim your promise. To pray without ceasing. To be faithful to you. And also to so live that others will see you through us. So let us have that experience with you, Father, that we all have a testimony to share. Because we know that you're an awesome God. Continue to bless us. And even as we partake of our physical food, may our mind stay on you. May we remember, Father, that we are on holy ground and be faithful and be reverent for the rest of today. Continue to bless us all, we pray in Jesus' name. <laughs>